One. All right, guys. I'm gonna be on a lot of channels. <laughs> I got YGO memes. Yeah. Slim. That's me. Asian Persuasion. That's you. And Wild Card Cyclone. That's you. Yeah. And you guys already know I'm Zach Stone. Yes. The, the, the one. Zach Stone. The Zach Stone. <laughs> Um, I decided to play a fusion deck with purple cards and <laughs> I stumbled upon top 32 of the 250th YCS in Los Angeles. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm from here so it feels really good to top in my hometown. I wanted to go further. Um, I was knocked out by Cash Tira. Unfortunate loss but um, you know I'm ready to share the deck now. All right let's see it. Um, to start off the monsters is just a three Aluber two tragedy and one ad lib uh you really don't need any more and I'll, there are times where i'm setting out the second tragedy um but the main bread and butter of the deck because uh this card's able to tutor uh any spell and trap um this card's amazing ad lib is just a very insane card being able to just um it, it's very flexible like this deck has a lot of lines of play and a lot of plays that people aren't familiar with ad lib can open up um, you'll see more in the deck, but this card actually, um, I fused away turn one to summon back a Luber that I like banished away. Um, and double tragedy is really good too, just so you have more reoccursion. And uh, it's still one of the best sends off branded fusion. Um, that's it for like the Despia cards. Um, the Albaz cards, it's three Fallen, uh, two Mercurier, and I don't believe you should be playing any less than two Bird. Um, you need the second one, it comes up too many times because one's almost always used in the combo and the second one you need to search. Uh, you can always shuffle back one with Dubelion and that's also a really good utility. Uh, it's just being able to put back cards and having more plays um, to extend your game further. And three Albaz is really important just because like, it's actually a good board breaker. Um, a lot of times when you're really grinding, you, the third one will come up. And even if you draw multiples, it's fine. Um, you, you can still play through it. Uh, it's also really important was two Cartesia. Uh, you need two, um, just because like uh, Kashtira banishing cards face down, if they banish the only one, it really stops a lot of the plays since I play fusion deployment. Um, but on top of that, it's just very good. It always keeps coming back. It's a free plus. Um, and it's literally let, what lets you play through Ash Blossom on the uh, Ash Your Branded Fusion. Um, without this card, this deck wouldn't be in the position it's in in the format. Um, and then the last Albaz cards are Shroud of Dragon, which is a staple, and I did decide to play the Spriggan's Kit. Um, in the extra deck, I do have Sprint, but as, as well as being able to loop other branded cards that are banished in, in your graveyard, um, it, it's actually a beast. And my thoughts were that under Rivalry, if this is on the field, uh, I can fuse this away into Guardian Chimera, that's also a beast. So that was something that I felt could come up in this uh, large event. Uh, to round out the bit of the monsters, it's Lubelion, Sarnir, and Dark Magician. And guys, there's no Ash Blossoms or Nibiru's in my deck. Wow. Call me crazy. But it's the idea that this is a deck that has to play the most amount of engine cards, meaning that your non-engine needs to be very impactful. Nibiru is an impactful card, but I felt that people were playing around Nibiru this format, and I chose a different card. But Ash Blossom, as good as a card as it is, especially against the Mirror Match, it's just too low impact when you need to like consolidate your non-engine to a few cards. Um, so I chose to just play more of an engine, and it did me pretty well. Um, you don't need to play any more Abysteals. Uh, Lubelion, you side out against Cash going second. It's just a dead card. Um, and that's it for the monsters. I think it's 20. Or 18. 18. Uh, onto the spells. Um, so I chose Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse is essentially like the most versatile card for the uh, format. I felt that it had applications against everything. Uh, obviously against Cash Tira. Um, it being a card that's also defensive came up for me, being able to set it. Uh, and a card that can dodge like effect negation, like impermanent skill drain, I felt was a good choice for the meta. Um, and I, I think it was a good overall choice. A lot of times too, it, it forced out Ash Blossom, <laughs> which uh, why, why play cross out and other cards that are dead in your deck when this is a cross out basically. Yeah. So uh, onto that three alert. It's literally what lets you play through uh, Ash Blossom on Branded Fusion. Uh, just seeing more cards to have more follow-up is kind of what you're doing at the end of the day. And this deck can play through a lot. And I mean a lot. 
So, you know, um, put some respect on this deck name, uh, this deck's name after you Ash Blossom or Branded Fusion, you might still lose. <laughs> um, three Fusion Deployment. Uh, this card is a good starter and a good board breaker. It gets summon Albaz, which is really good. Summoning Cartesia is broken. And um, just in case you can summon Dark Magician in some <laughs> weird scenarios. Um, and then Foolish and Goldsark because they are basically um, extra copies of whatever you're missing out of your hand. Um, Foolish is only good for tragedy. There are some situations where you can send um, like Albaz in the graveyard, for example, to make uh, Cartesia live in your hand. Um, but you can cite it out along with that uh, second tragedy as an easy follow-up. But Gold Sark is very, very, very strong. Just to banish the Mercurier. Um, I th Mercurier, again, is one of the best cards. You always use one for like a combo and an or an extender, and then the other one's the, basically your only hand trap. Um, and then the branded spells are three branded fusion, three branded opening. Um, so I, I was told to swap out my branded in red, and I borrowed one, and then I put back the other one I owned and uh, so this is branded in red um, branded lost and then a lot of people weren't playing branded in white but I thought this card was really good um, you have to use a dragon in order to uh, basically resolve this card but if you use Albaz you can basically um, treat it as miracle fusion and banish cards from your graveyard um, it can summon Dragoon there was actually a couple times where I had like hard uh, like a hard bestial and a dark magician with this so I just made Dragoon and then activated Branded Fusion. So like if I had Ash, I can negate it, which was kind of cool. Um, but I think this card is really good. And it comes up a lot with the uh, with the Retribution play um, because it's another card you can send to extend further into your plays. And I, again, I like this card a lot. Um, you can side it out in certain matchups. Um, and if you feel like it is a brick, then um, you don't have to play it. That's a good thing about this card. Uh, I also main deck the Expulsion, but I didn't main deck Gimmit Puppet. Um, it is in the side deck, however. But main decking Expulsion is really good, actually. They, uh, the ability to play around uh, evenly matched comes up a lot. Um, this is actually one that that card alone can beat this deck sometimes. But if you have expulsion, you're pretty much safe because you can just summon back like a Mercurier or a Tragedy. And if they have no way of extending, you can uh, mirror jade it away and get more follow up that way. Um, cool thing against Kashira is normally your line of play is like mirror jade, and I have this set. If they special summon any Kashira, you're always going to shotgun your mirror jade. And if they have birth and activate it. Um, even though it doesn't target, uh, I can. Tar I basically summoned back their Kashira, and I, I did that a couple times, and it was very, very strong. So overall, this card is very good. Again, it can dodge effect negation too. Um, so in some situations, it can help some effects resolve. Um, and it's a 40-card deck. Nice. I'm going to the extra deck first. Um, it's very standard, honestly. It's just two Lobelions, two Mirror Jades, two Albions. Brindworm, Burgrand, and they did play the Sprint. Um, I wasn't afraid of Contaxi. That really wasn't the reason I played it. It was because most of my lines of play were the Expulsion before I'd set Branded in red. So if I had an Albaz banished, most of the time Expulsion was going to sum summon back Albaz and fuse with their special summon monster that turn. It was the more like safest card because this requires a level 8, this requires like a Beast Beast Warrior, and then Lights and Darks and an extra deck one. Um, so this one can be a little bit more specific, um, especially against like Link monsters. Um, so I felt like it was just safer to play this with the Springins kit. Um, being able to summon it in the end phase if you sent it off Mirror Jade was a good uh, good play too. Um, the Grand Goyle, I only played one. No one was banishing this off uh, Diabolos, and uh, take that information for what you want. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> chose this, and I'm down. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I didn't play Proskinian, I played Quartus. Came up more than Proskinian, especially um, because it applies a lot of pressure and it can just go for game. I was playing the Alba, uh, Alba Lentness before, so there were situations where you can make all their monsters zero and just kind of kill them because of it. Um, but I had to cut it just for other space issues. Um, two Dragoon, because you can't let one get banished off uh, <laughs> Kashira. And then I did play the Predator Plant still. I didn't play Masquerade. And on the last card was Guardian Chimera, of course. Um, and then for the side deck, Triple Kaijus. Um, Dark for Allure. Realistically, that was the only justification why I chose this one over any one other one. Um, and I just felt like it was safe to just combat with like triple dark ruler no more um just a lot of situations where like going second 
Um, they just, uh, the Kashtira deck just ends on a bunch of monsters and a kaiju can't like beat it alone. So Dark Ruler is really good, but also like against decks like Sprite and um, there's another deck that I like this for. I can't remember off the top of my head. That Runic? Yes, Interior Runic is really, this card is really good against Interior Runic. These cards are both really good against Interior Runic. So these are just like my going second cards along with Book of Eclipse. I just felt like I had enough going second cards uh, post side. Um, I did side the Gimmick Puppet. Um, Jinzo as well as another target. And I tried this out. Uh, this is really uh, only something I did off theory. I have never tested this before I played this event. I just had an extra space and I felt like it was just better better of a choice. But realistically, you just have it for uh, the Runic decks. Um, the idea is you summon it on your field and they, they have a hard time playing through this. Um, but I didn't feel like it was like, the, you know, the killer. I still feel like this is like obviously good, but in a perfect world, you summon back this and this, right? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. it called? Uh, Invader of Darkness. Hasn't yeah. been in nobody's oh, Invasion of Chaos so OG. Yeah. You'd probably hate pulling this back in the day. Yeah, it's pretty bad because it's double tribute. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, Harpies. So, this and Jinzo were literally my only like forms of back row interruption slash removal. Um, this deck can't afford to really like play like spot removal, like one for one cards. You're really like, you're not trying to play in a simplified game state. You're trying to blow them out. Um, Call by the Grave just to force cards to resolve. Um, I chose to side it because, like, theory, in theory, if you go second against Cash and they make a Rise Heart, any hand trap they have will just be banished anyway. Um, so I just wanted to side deck this for when I know I'm going first. Um, and to round off the rest of it, it's um, I sided the Garura. Um, realistically, you don't need the second Dragoon unless you're playing against Cash. So it was always taken out for that because it comes up even in the Grand Goyle combo and Branded in White because you can um, just banish that uh, and Albas to summon uh, either a Mirror Jade or a Bruin Worm. Um, so Super Poly did come up a lot. Um, it was really good against like Labyrinth, really good, um, you know, and playing against the mirror match, it's, it's good in the mirror match in theory, it's good against Sprite. Um, and I, I sided it in against like other matchups I didn't know like necessarily what was better against. So I played against a Scareclaw and I, I tried this out and it worked out because I fused away like the Tryheart um, against Nat Runic. Uh, I tried this out and I fused away um, the Baron with Albaz. And then I just, I, I did this just because like, I feel like you have to, it's like a searchable, like super poly, literally. Um, and with that being said, guys, I got some shout outs. Here it comes to job yeah. stuff, baby. I Let's got see. it on my phone. <laughs> I had to make sure. So first and foremost, I'm gonna shout out Team JRB. Sure. Um, you know, uh, the team is a, a good good uh, community and a lot of people that I um, reach out to, they, um, they, do, they do give me some advice and help me out. Um, shout out to the YGO memes crew. Um, you know, they are always posting funny memes on Facebook. Go ahead and follow us. We get 100k followers. Uh, shout out to the Vegas Discord and they really be, really be your own Discord. Uh, shout out to Ageless Cards and TLA Cards and Games. Those stores are in the South Bay area. So if you're local to LA, go check them out. And to all my friends and loved ones, especially you guys, shout out to the content creators because without you guys, how would people know about this game? Hell yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you, you dog. Congrats yeah. on the top cut and thanks for the next one. Thank you.